Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. This video is going to be focused on the S&P 500. This has just been such a wild market environment over the past couple of months. And it is scary because we are seeing definite signs that we are coming towards the end of a boom and bust cycle. We've got a yield curve that's clearly coming closer and closer to inversion. And when that does happen, you tend to see big market tops follow the end of a boom and bust cycle, right? It happened in 1999, it happened back in 2007, it happened back in 2018, right here. This was a top, although the markets were saved by the pandemic, right? Central banks stepped in with extremely easy monetary policy right at the end of a boom and bust cycle. And now we're sort of coming towards that moment of truth where we're going to see how the end of this boom and bust cycle plays out and how the end of this bull market that we've had since 2009, how that's going to unwind. But of course, stock market returns in this final phase are often exceptional. That's often when you have the biggest moves in the shortest amount of time if you're able to take advantage of volatility in the proper way you can have massive rallies on equities. So that's exactly what we do on these videos. We try to look at the data as objectively as possible and figure out where we are and what the best decision, in our opinion, is. If you're interested in following these crazy markets with us, make sure to click on that subscribe button. And now without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so before we talk about the Federal Reserve and what happened in their March meeting, let's quickly take a look at what's happening here throughout this week. This is a weekly chart, right? So each candlestick is a week worth of trading. And you can see, while initially last week we had a big breakdown of this technical structure here, this head and shoulder pattern that so many people have been watching. Now this week, what we're seeing is it snapping back above both the neckline of this head and shoulder pattern and this long-term price channel resistance. Now this is the bull market channel that we've been following for months throughout this period here that really limited the entire bull market since 2009. And we broke out of it in 2021, retested it here in this correction. And you can see what's happened here. We have a false break down and snap back above. In fact, if you were with us right here uh, towards the end of February, I believe we were talking about this and we were starting to look for a bottom in the market. The S&P 500 had already corrected around 10% from the all time high, but we were looking at this head and shoulder pattern. I believe it was a video uh, exclusively talking about the head and shoulder pattern and we said, you know, institutions, big money, they often like to screw around with retail investors and bring the market down below that big support and then snap it back up. And that basically traps most investors, makes a lot of people panic sell out of their position before bringing the market back up above support. So having this big green bullish engulfing candle back above important levels of support and having that weekly close, right? A big, nice candle. That is a bullish technical development and definitely something to pay attention to. And if you remember uh, in that video where we discussed the head and shoulder pattern, we also talked about this pattern right here that we said could definitely look something like we would see here in 2022. In 2010, we had a very, very similar type of pattern where we had a breakdown here, a weekly close under that neckline, right? Head and shoulder pattern, weekly close under that neckline, and then a big, powerful snap back above the neckline. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, what everyone is paying attention to, and, and that is, of course, the Federal Reserve that just made a meeting that just had the FOMC meeting this week, and they increased the federal fund rate by 0.25 basis points. 
which was exactly what was expected, right? They even said that would be the case much before the meeting. So that interest rate hike was definitely not unexpected, but we did get a very aggressive increase in their projections of their rate hikes throughout 2022. And what they priced in, I believe, was seven or eight rate hikes for 2022. They said they could see the federal fund rate at 1.9% by the end of 2022. And that, of course, would be a very, very aggressive rise in the federal fund rate that would look something like this much more aggressive than what we had throughout 2016 to 2018. We'd basically have that same move, but in one year as opposed to three years. So very, very aggressive tightening, which is in line with what the banks have been talking about, right? JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, all of them have been calling throughout the past few weeks for aggressive hikes from the Federal Reserve. And so although this might look very scary in terms of projection, especially when it's coming now from the Federal Reserve, it's not unexpected. This has already been priced in by the market. This is why we've had a 15% correction from the all-time high. In fact, it has triggered one of the lowest readings in risk appetite amongst investors. This is the risk appetite indicator from Goldman Sachs showing that we're currently at the lowest levels of risk-taking since COVID-19. Before that, it was 2019. Before that, it was towards the end of 2018, which was at this market bottom right here. And before that, it was 2016, which was at this market bottom here. So a huge amount of panic. Everyone is concerned about the Federal Reserve right now. And if we look at this chart right here, it tells us that not only people are concerned, but they've acted on that fear. This is the cash balance from fund managers. And you can see cash levels are currently, again, at the same levels that they were back in April 2020 right at that moment when it was the best idea not to have any cash. And this is what I say, this is what I always say, having a high balance of cash is basically fuel to take the markets higher because that blue line, the higher that blue line is, the more buying power you have to buy stocks when some of that fear that we've had in the market starts to dissipate. By the way, if you are so far enjoying this video, do not forget to smash that like button as hard as you can if you appreciate the effort and time that goes into making the research and putting these videos together for you guys. That's all for the price of just a couple of seconds to hit that gray thumb. And of course, subscribe if you have not already done so. So we had the March meeting, the March FOMC meeting, and right after that and right during the meeting, we had the S&P 500 and most indices break out of their uh, bearish uh, downtrends. Now, if you've been following us, again, I don't like to brag about calls that we've made or, or haven't made, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, we were looking for a bottom around this range when the market is anticipating bad news. And in that case, that was the uh, rate hike on the March 15th. There's a lot of uncertainty leading up to that bad news. And then once that's out of the way, then all the market can do is look uh, to the future uh, for good news. And so that is often what happens. You get a nice bounce after a uh, rate hike that is really not the first time we've seen that in stock market history. On top of that, you had all the sentiment indicators that we were looking at, including the put call ratio that was spiking, showing evidence, the market nearing a local bottom. When you have the put call ratio spiking, it means there's too much bearish sentiment. And we had the number of bulls in the market uh, at extreme lows with under 20 5% of investors being bullish in the market. At one point, it was under 20%. Under one in five investors were actually bullish in the market. You know, that doesn't mean that we're heading into a massive bull run, but these types of readings often correspond to local bottoms. And, you know, this is exactly what we're seeing right now, especially when you have a bullish technical pattern like we had right here. We had a bullish falling wedge with a contracting price action 
and fading momentum. It's telling you that there's less and less conviction behind that move down. And when you get that breakout, it's an impulsive move higher. In fact, if we take a look at one of the premium posts that we made uh, earlier this week, we compared how similar the setup was on the NASDAQ 100 to what we had during COVID. You know, imagine the comparison. This is the first time we had bullish divergence like this with a contracting price action, the price making lower lows and the RSI making higher lows showing you there's less and less conviction behind that move down. We gave a minimum target uh, for that uh, pattern. And if we zoom in uh, into this interactive chart, this is one of my favorite features from uh, the website, we can take a look at how this setup played out. And we've made a beautiful impulsive breakout of this wedge pattern. So that's a very bullish impulsive breakout. That's great news. But in the short term, you know, we're very overextended here. This is a massive move up. If we go and jump to a four hour chart, the RSI, for example, is telling us that we're extremely overbought. Typically, you get a short term pullback when you get that type of overbought reading. So you know, between here, and you know, the target that we laid out around 15,000 points, it's very likely we'll get some type of a rejection and a little bit more volatility. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But just as a quick spoiler, I think we've seen the lows. Now, you know, I, I don't like making these kinds of calls because you guys hold me up to very high standards when it comes to the things I've said and the things I haven't said. But if I had to give my honest opinion, I think this was the low. I think we'll see a little bit more volatility, but I doubt we'll be undercutting uh, this low right here. But what's also very important to understand is that before this all goes higher, before we get out of this state of fear and uncertainty in the market, it's going to take time. The market doesn't change opinion overnight. It can take time before investors realize that maybe the economy is weakening and the Fed isn't going to tighten nearly as much as what they're saying now. And we've gone back and we've done our research on this. Every time that happens, every cycle at the end of a boom and bust cycle, when the Federal Reserve is hawkish and talking about rate hikes, but you have a weakening economy, that switch from hawkish to dovish can trigger massive rallies. And you know, 2019 right here, it's just one example of a massive rally following a type of tightening tantrum. And you might say things are very different now, like inflation that is currently at levels we haven't seen in decades. But we actually posted an article on this on gameoftrades.net where we took a look at everything. We took a look at growth. We took a look at where we were in the economic cycle and the boom and bust cycle. We took a look at what we can expect from inflation and how all of that is going to impact the stock market over the next few months based on historical examples. And we try to put all of that together in understandable language so that anyone who actually wants to participate and comprehend the market can actually do so by reading these articles. And what all of this research points us to is that we're going to see more volatility in the next few weeks. But we ultimately think that this volatility that we're seeing can be taken advantage of to take the markets much higher. And of course, we'll be updating you guys every step of the way by putting out these frequent up to date analysis and research on the levels we're watching out for the buying opportunities we're seeing in different sectors and when we actually expect the markets to move out of this period of consolidation and resume what we think is going to be probably the last run to a bull market top. And I wanted to share with you guys one more funny piece of information and, and that it, one more funny piece of information. I always find these hedge fund managers absolutely hilarious. They've had their worst year ever throughout the second half of 2021 and now 2022. You would think that these professionals would know how to navigate different types of market environments. Why am I saying this? Because poor hedge fund performance tends to coincide with market bottoms. 
right? Look at this. This is a market bottom in 2019. This is a market bottom during COVID. This is a market bottom in 2016. This is a market bottom in 2012. And this was the 2009 market bottom. Hedge fund managers basically only perform well when the market is going up. Now, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button. Now, in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.